How's it ground, folks? What we have here is another video. This is an AC maintenance on the 2022 install. And I'm gonna show you guys real quick how we check superheat on this unit. Inside, they said we just did a coil and a condenser. This is straight AC. And they have a 90% gas furnace downstairs. And as you can see, that's a 13 sear, three ton. And guys, real quick, inside the evac coil has a fixed orifice metering device. Whenever you do sub cooling, it's very important for you to know what type of metering device you have because with a TXV, sub cooling will come more into effect versus superheat. But it's still a great practice to do both. Check for your superheat and your sub cool. But in this case, guys, this is only sub cooling. Right now, it's about 65 degrees out. It's starting to heat up, but yeah, it's a relatively colder morning. So it's it's warm enough to, to put our gauges on, but it's definitely not ideal as far as the humidity. There's really no humidity outside right now. So, but we can still use 65 degrees ambient temperature, which is our outdoor temperature for testing purposes. And guys, how you use this chart, two things you need to know is the tonnage of the unit and your outdoor temperature and also the type of metering device. Now we're still gonna check our sub cool, but remember we have a fixed orifice. So 36 and 65, that equates to a 263 and 132. So that means our head pressure should be, if not at or close to 263 and our low size should be at 132. So, and right now we are at and this is R14A, by the way. We're at 125 on the low side, which equates to a 40 degree um, saturation temperature on the low side. And our liquid line saturation temperature, our pressures on the high side is almost at a T77. So it's between 275 and 280. And that equates to Trying to focus the camera we'll say a 90 degree saturation temperature now remember guys this is a, a fixed orifice and right now i have my pipe thermometer on my high side so you you take your saturation temperature which is given because it's already on your gauges you take your saturation temperature and you minus your line temperature depending on which one you use that will either get you your superheat or your sub cool being that we're at a 90 degree saturation temperature minus an 82 degree liquid line temperature that gives us an eight degree sub cool, which is not bad on a, on a day like today. But I'm gonna put this down to check our soupy heat, which is more accurate because we have a fixed surface inside. I'm gonna wait for our temperatures to drop and we take our, our suction side, our suction line temperature and subtract it from our saturated liquid line temperature. And remember guys, the saturation temperature is given on your gauges, so do not confuse one with the other. And yeah, I actually did have analog or digital gauges, but my digital gauges broke, so I'm doing this the old fashioned way. But you get it done how you get it done, fellas. You know how you go. So it's still going down. And we're at like a 40 degree coil and it's this unit has been running now for like the past 15 minutes so i know my my refrigerant pressures are stabilized it's not going to get higher or lower than what it is right now so currently guys 70 and it's still dropping so currently a oh let's say a 70 degree suction line temp minus a 40 degree saturation temp on the low side that equates to, oh, hold on, that's my meter beep in there, hold on. All right, so it looks like it's stabilizing at 68. So yeah, guys, that 68 minus the 40, that's about a 28 degree superheat. And remember guys, this is fixed orifice. So using that chart is definitely, and it's still going down.
looks like it's staying at 60. Yeah, it's still going down. Cool. So yeah, like I said, I can, you can bet money at a 65 degree ambient. There's not going to be much of any humidity inside, but like I said, using a chart, guys, on this condenser is a great reference to at least let you know if you're in the right ballpark. Now, guys, if we install this unit in December with snow on the ground, uh, and the, the chart, the door even, even tells you guys, you can always weigh in the charge. Weighing in the charge is very handy whenever, you know, you're, you're doing an AC repair when it's below um, 70 degrees out. We use 70 all the time, but this thing even tells you charge the system by weight if the outside temperature is below 65, but we use 70 as a threshold. But like I said, 65 is okay. Uh, but yeah, guys, me personally, if I know I'm above freezing on my low side and it's like not real hot or not cold, then like, you know, that's that's that at least lets me know if I'm if I'm in the right ballpark. But like for instance, guys, and right now, by the way, our superheat is still dropping a little bit, but 66 minus that 48. I'll I'll still take that. I'll still take that superheat. 20 plus, and the, and the chart guys calls for a 35 degree superheat, which I think is absurd. <laughs> being that the outdoor temperature is only 65 that's a lot of super heat for not a lot of humidity outside so i mean yeah guys i mean that's you can take from that reference what you want there but that 35 in my opinion you know that's a little obsessive for you know not, no humidity but the fact is guys we do have super heat and it looks like here it's staying at a 66 minus that 40 degree coil. That's a 26 degree superheat. So it looks like it's just going to hover around 66. I'll take 28 out of 35, guys. So um, back to what I was saying here, as far as with the um, with the with the system here. I mean, I can check superheat and so cool as long as it's at 65 degree ambient. But guys, like I said, it's it's always a good. Um, procedure not to do super heat and so cool when it's like real cold outside because you know anything worse than the temperature I'm telling you right now that I'm seeing it's probably going to relate to you guys having to come back anyway on a warmer day but if you had to install a system these condensers already come pre-charged for 15 feet of line set most of the time that can get you guys by unless you had to run like an extended amount of line set but yeah guys most of the time as long as I'm above freezing then yeah I can I can definitely I can definitely get by, but like I say, using superheat is so cool. This is the only way to accurately check when the ambient is above threshold, meaning 65 degrees. This is the only way to really check how well the system is running. And of course, digital gauges, I would have had everything in one, but I'm just showing you guys the old fashioned way, line temperature, saturation temperature, the difference, depending on the meter and device, will either get you, get you a superheat and so cool. So, there you guys have it. Hope this helps out. I'm going to pack up and get out of here. Peace out. I'll see you guys in the next one.